Um, okay, now that we've uh, tried to create our thesis statements that we know when you're ready, um, then, then um, thank you. Okay, let's, let's begin with talking about our goals. So we've created a thesis statement that can change. So this is a positional thesis statement. As you start researching over the next few days, you, you will find uh, different material and you may actually tweak that a little bit. Now let's talk about the goals. Moving into our audience analysis, we need to make some determinations how we're going to be persuading our audience. So the first thing we're looking at is the audience's disposition. That's determining whether they're favorable, unfavorable, somewhere in between that, or neutral on your topic. After you see that, take a look at these surveys, and you should be able to start looking into them at this time, and then you can determine a goal. Now this actually is not in your textbook. This is borrowed from the Communication Works, Seidler and Beal textbook. And uh, we're looking at possibly four different goals. You could have a combination of goals, or you may actually have all of these four goals, depending on what your surveys look like. So if I'm looking at, let's say an example would be, um, I'm doing a presentation to persuade you to study more. And um, I'm looking at your surveys, and I notice that the class does not study, what I want to do is have a goal of adoption that says that I know you're not studying and I want you to start studying. So adoption is assuming that your audience is not doing something and you want them to start. Discontinuance means that your audience is doing something and you want them to stop doing that thing. So if I were to look into your surveys, and I would see that, you know, you do study several hours a week, but you have a lot of things that are going on at the same time. So you're highly distracted when you're studying. So I may look at this, and I may say, my goal is now to have you eliminate those distractions. I want you to dis discontinue those other things. I want you to protect that study time, and put that phone away, turn out the music that has the words to it, turn off the TV, so that would be a goal of dis discontinuance. Deterrence may not work as well with this example. So deterrence means that you're not doing something and I don't want you to start. So, so you can see that that, would, that wouldn't work for this one. I would be saying that you're not studying and I don't want you to start. But this works very well with maybe some high risk things. For example, um, some drug use. That could be something that would fall under deterrence. So if I am, I think of my last class used heroin as an example in here. So deterrence would be those campaigns that would say, that just say no. You're not doing something already, and that's good. We don't want you to start because that causes some problems. We were talking about uh, smoking earlier. If you're not a smoker, if you're not engaged in e-cigarettes, don't start. They're very expensive, highly addictive, and uh, a lot of people regret uh, getting addicted to something like that. So that, that's a deterrence. Uh, continuance means that your audience is already doing something and we want you to keep on doing that. So that's a nice reinforcement, so highly favorable you can see with your audience disposition. Um, maybe you are studying, you have good study habits and I want you to continue. Maybe you're on an exercise plan and I want you to continue doing that. Okay, so depending on your topics you can see how this would fit. Here. Okay, thank you. 